Hi everyone, it's Shell from Shell Shell Crochet. Welcome to my August 2022 crochet podcast. Let's talk whips and finished objects. Blankets, blankets, blankets. How are you today? I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to anyone who's new. I noticed that there have been some new people joining our fun crochet community here. And I think some of you have come over from my friend Z, Zelda NRJ3, and my friend Rose at Rose Likes Crochet. Welcome. Please say hello in the comments below because I love getting to know you. And we're going to talk about what's been on the hook in August. Um, I'm a day or so late with this one because August 31st was yesterday and I needed to do my temperature blanket. So we'll get to that. Um, just a little bit about my channel because there have been some new people come and join us throughout the summer. So I podcast once a month and I show you everything I've been able to make for the most part um, in the month. Usually the video will come out sometime towards the very end of the month. The reason that I'm on that schedule is that it does pretty much take me a day to get my video sort of going, sorted out and edited. Edited is a lot of the time. And I lose about a day of crochet because I'm making the video. So that's why I'm not on here more often. Also, it's helpful for me to kind of see what I have been up to throughout the month and get to share with all of you and get your feedback. Um, I do really enjoy the back and forth communication because we're all learning from each other. So never hesitate to ask any questions or give me any of your ideas. I'm always happy to hear all about that. I think I'll start off with a very short clip because my friend Lisa from Lisa's Crochet recently did this adorable, hilarious video of her trying center pull. <laughs> and I, um, I love center pull and we've talked about this before here and, um, I will do anything to send her pull, but here is a quick video of what can happen sometimes when it doesn't go well. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that was really short and sweet, and I will probably start by showing you that project too. Um, and I have the yarn label, so just one sec. I'm currently on my third project with this yarn, and it is a Bernat Softy Chunky Tweets, which is uh, 300 gram balls, 97% acrylic, 3% viscose, and it's considered a six, super bulky, and... Um, at that little clip was one of the the big balls in the middle it was getting kind of uh stuck on itself and i had to un unpull out those knots usually they're just easy if you just pull on either side and they're it's just kind of wound around itself and i find it's funny with um when yarn gets like that one of the worst ones i ever had was with the lion brand pound of love and it had so many what seemed like knots, um, stuck chunks of yarn on the inside. It took me a really long time to get that one sorted out, but I don't know why, but I, I just never opt to go on the outside anyway, especially with the bigger balls, because I think I would have to find something pretty giant, like maybe a clothes uh, basket or something to stick them in for them to be able to roll around. Uh, I just like, for the most part, it's easier for me from the inside. Um, anyway, I really appreciated Lisa for doing that. That was hilarious. I'm glad you liked it, Lisa. And that yarn is gorgeous. And let's get back to what's going on with this. Um, I'm going to pop up some pictures here. I got inspired by Evelyn. Hi, Evelyn. Uh, she posted on Instagram a one of Carrie Penny's shawls that she was making. And she was doing hers, I think, in some DK weight yarn or three weight yarn held together. And I thought, oh, it's black and it's gorgeous. I'll try it with this yarn. Well, as you can see from the pictures, I did try, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't keep it. <laughs> so I made it um, to where it was almost getting poncho size on me. And I did it with the extra wedge 
um, and I really liked it. It was so easy and mindless because it's all double crochets and then you have um, the sort of fillet part to give it that nice little um, pie shape and just extra something in the pattern. So thanks Carrie Penny for the pattern as well. Um, and I will make it again, but I realized that in this super bulky yarn, it was just going to be way too heavy. And the way it was increasing was going to make it too big by the time I got it to the length that I wanted. So again, that one will come back in a different yarn when I figure out what yarn I really want it to be. And we'll go from there. But let's see what that turned into. It was a lot of frogging. Like it was almost three whole balls of yarn with a frogging. So <sighs> I've said before, I like to share the fails along with the success stories. So here is what we ended up with. And one of the reasons I started to do the shawl is A, I've never made it and I really wanted to make it. But B, I was trying to get a blanket pattern going with this yarn that um, I really liked how it looked and a nice big hook so it'd be nice and drapey. And that wasn't working either. So uh, this was my, um, after I had pulled out the shawl, I started another blanket pattern. I still didn't like it. And that is down here in the middle of the cowl. It's gonna be, oh, you can see it on the camera good. You can see that there's some skipped stitches and some um, interest going on in the pattern there. Um, between it being black and being tweed, <laughs> it is difficult to see with this yarn. But basically what I did was I just seamed that up on the back and it's very, very friendly seam, we'll call it, cause you don't notice it too, too much. And then I did um, some increases at the bottom and some decreases at the top to make this a nice cowl. And I will stick it on for you. Just give me one sec. So it is black on black here, but you can see that it's super um, deep and cozy. And I can go like this with it, which is what I love about the real cowls is being able to tuck your head into them if you need and you don't necessarily need to have a hat and a scarf. So finally something cozy. I haven't been really making any of the little things lately. So <laughs> it's nice to have something like that on your hook this time of year when we're heading into fall. Anyway, this was a wing it pattern. So if you have any other questions, just let me know. So I do have a strategy with why I'm using this yarn. I got this yarn on clearance last year at Walmart and the huge 300 gram balls were down to $3. And I can't pass that up. Not even when I'm not buying yarn, which for the most part, I'm not buying yarn. <laughs> because I really want to use what's here, right? And one of the strategies I have with using up this yarn is that these skeins take up a huge amount of room. <laughs> so if I can get these used up, then I have more room on my shelf for things I want to be able to look at or remind myself that are there so they get used as well. So I finally got a blanket pattern that I'm happy with. The cowl took, I would say, just a smidge over a ball, maybe a ball and a half. And so this current amount is now almost two full balls, I think. And I'm doing like the corner to corner, but not corner to corner. So people call that the block stitch. Uh, Drunken Granny is a similar stitch. Um, so it's basically when you're doing how I'm starting them anyway. Which side am I on? There's my, uh, there's my stitch marker. I talked about these a while ago. I found these huge plastic lob lobster clods on um, Amazon. They work great for my arth arthritic hands. And especially for bigger stitch blankets, I like to do a lot of double stranded projects and then use chunky yarn and they're great for that. So, so um, I felt Jada and Stitches tutorial to give it a start. So I'll link that in the description box. But basically as I'm gonna turn my row here, it ends on a single crochet. So I flip it over, single crochet, chain two. I'm doing a chain two on purpose because it gives it a little more texture. And then three double crochets and then you have your little um, the one from the previous stitch and you're going in there. So it's very, very, very similar to corner to corner. <laughs> and here it is. So it's wider than I can get on the camera. And I'm just going to go till I run out of yarn. So I have this much left on the ball that I'm working on. And I think I have three or four more. And again, I got these all for $3. So it's going to be a nice warm blanket and it's tweedy and black. <laughs> Uh, I love working with black. Um, I run out of black a lot, so I must use it a lot. I like it in granny squares, but you do need a lot of light. So either bright lights when you're when you're working or daylight like now is great for working with black. And this is going to be super, super warm. Just from quickly putting that hoodie on and playing with this, I'm already getting warm in here. And I'm out here today rather than in the yarn room because it's cooler in this room than in the yarn room. <laughs> Any questions about that let me know oh sorry 12 millimeter hook for that and I think I was using the 12 millimeter hook with the cowl as well 
I tend to forget to mention, sorry. Seems as we're on whips, I'll stick with whips at the beginning. Last um, time I told you about making the Jada and Stitches 2018 Victorian Stitch Sampler blanket as a wrap using Mandela Cakes, three weight yarn and smaller hook. And you can go back to that video so you can see how it looked. It was just last month's video. Um, I was struggling with the fact that the, especially the first uh, month, January stitch, it's very lacy and open and it's the one that starts off the blanket. So it's pretty obvious that when the others um, start, it goes in a little bit. It's not as open. Um, there's a lot of variation in that blanket and it's no big deal as a blanket. You could block it out and things like that. But I thought to myself, why don't I just try changing the hook size? Now, talking about frogging again, because I tend not to do a lot of frogging, but I decided that it was going to bug me enough that I ripped it all back um, as far as January. So I left the January stitches there and I restarted February going up a hook size. So I barely started that. I only got like three or four rows, but enough to show me that the edges are going more straight on the sides. So if I get time to work on that in September, then I will bring it back and show it to you the next time I do. But I just wanted to uh, touch on that again because there's been a couple questions about why I said um, changing hook size. Because for my personal tension, um, obviously when I'm doing lacier stitches, I'm crocheting more loosely than when I'm doing stitches I do all the time, like doubles. And a lot of the stitch patterns in that blanket have a lot of double crochets in them and some single crochets and things like that. But when you're doing a lot of open chain work and following a pattern that someone else is giving you, that can cause kind of in and out. And I mean, there's always gonna be variations in those stitches. We saw that also with JJ's blanket last year, the Mighty Mile a Minute. A lot of the strips were shorter than others, depending upon how they were, how that stitch pattern worked. So it's just a little trick I thought of trying and it's working for me quite well. So, um, I'll go over it more in detail the next time I bring it back. I'm not sure when I'm going to get to work on that again. Um, I actually have two long-term whips right now that I'm happy to have, and that's not generally how I am, but they're the types of projects that I want to work on when I want to work on them, and I know I'll get them done. Um, the other one is the um, raglan style vest I'm making off of Karen from the Stitch Sessions. It's a beach cover-up she made, but I'm I'm using two-weight cotton fair to make a vest in purple. Those are going to be very long-term whips, so not showing them this video, and I'll show them to you when I have some work done on them, but I just wanted to make sure I talked about the hook size from last time to give a little bit more context. Any other questions on that, just let me know. Okay, so how about the reason that we're a little late this month on this video? The temperature blanket, I am doing the weekly temperature blanket that was started with by Dina from Dina's Homespun Fun, and I had heard about it from Rose at Rose Likes Crochet. And it is just the high temperature on Wednesdays. I think they were taking the temperature at noon, um, once a week for the year. And there's a color chart that she had provided. I'm working strictly from stash. So I created my own color chart and adjusted it a couple times, <laughs> but it is available on the community tab. And just a note about the community tab. You'll find the community tab very easily if you're on a computer or if you're on a phone. Um, but if you're on a tablet, the community tab doesn't work, especially it does not work for um, iPads. But um, there is a lot of information in people's community tabs. So when you're following a channel, I suggest you go and have a look in the community tab every once in a while as well, because people do post things there um, that are helpful. And uh, hopefully that helps you find the community tab. Anyway, um, this was for August and I was noticing um, there's been not too many times where two weeks in a row were the same color and that was happening for me a bit in August. So anyway, let's go back to the beginning. It's harder and harder to show it, but Ooh. so this one is the high temperatures. I made two blankets. This one is following Craig from Fiber Spiders uh, ripple granny pattern and this one has two rows of divider. So January, February, March, April, let me grab her again, May, June, July, and August. So you can see there that I had a couple rows of that baby yellow. I have the pink, the baby yellow, the golden yellow, and the turquoise. And yeah, so September was really warm here, 
but we work off temperature and then Humidex and I'm not using the Humidex temperature or the feels like temperature. I'm using the actual temperature, the high and then the low on the other blanket. Um, so yeah, um, it was really hot here, but the, the called for temperature didn't reflect how it was really feeling. And August was very humid as well. Okay, so the lows. Um, I went back on this one too, and there was a couple, uh, I think more months that had two weeks in a row on here, but still it's, it's not happening all that often. Anyway, so starting in the beginning of the year. Oh, and this one is a different pattern. This is Bag O'Day, Crystal from Bag O'Day's Ripple Granny. Uh, January, oh, this one only has one divider row, February. Janu oh, anyway, I'm not gonna say all the months. And let me get the newest one. So there's August, so I'll just show it to you upside down. And uh, <clears throat> it is very corally. So I have my coral and then my peony pink which I hope I don't run out of because this is gonna start being the highs instead of the lows as we move through the fall. Uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, loving it, loving both of them. And I think I like doing Craig's version um, of the actual stitch better. Uh, Crystals has, um, what do you call that? Crochet three togethers as the dips. And I just think overall, I like doing it with skipping uh, a shell and having your dip that way. I didn't like the start of Craig's version because it's a chain and it looks very gappy. I had just done some single crochets to, uh, to fix that. But if anyone has any other ideas about ripple patterns, I'm always eager to try. I've never really been very successful at falling in love with regular ripple blankets because I feel like it's all I'm doing is counting, but this takes that away because as soon as you have your startup row done and your shells are there, all you're doing is going into the gaps like you do with normal granny stitch. So much more uh, mindless and fun and I have been doing pretty good with my ends. So my rule has been once I get three months in, I do my ends. So after September, I will get rid of these guys again and we'll go from there. Any questions, let me know. Okay, so sticking with whips, um, I have another pseudo long-term whip. This one's gonna be done by November, but I have started it. I'm making myself a granny square sweater. I'm actually gonna make my husband a sweater too. His is gonna be a normal cardigan. And I had been sort of hoarding or saving <laughs> my um, Premier Anti-Pilling Yarns to do these projects, these two projects with for us for November. And um, I started by trying to see how many squares I would get out of one of these. So, I mean, you most people would probably be familiar, but just in case, Premier Anti-Pilling Everyday Medley. Uh, so these are the ones that look kind of heathered. And uh, like new, wash after wash, this is anti-pilling acrylic, 100% uh, anti-pilling acrylic, uh, 100 grams, 3.5 ounces, 200 meters, 219 yards. There she is again. And I used the whole skein I had of this one color. So that, I don't have that ball band, so I don't know the name of the color, but this one's a darker maroon. You can see it's very heathered looking. My ends are still on, because I'm not done yet. <laughs> and I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll put the hook size at the bottom. It's either a six or a 5.5. And um, this is gonna get trimmed in another color, probably a charcoal color. I haven't exactly decided the trim yet. Here's another, well, this skein I'm gonna be using to make squares with as well. And then this is another skein that will probably make it in the blanket. But I have a few um, different colors. I want some variety, but then this charcoal black I have will use will be used to kind of bring it all together. Um, I did make a granny square cardigan for one of my friends last year. So I'll pop up some pictures at the end of that if you wanna have a look. So I got an idea of what I'm doing. Um, but my squares are going to be slightly smaller, um, trying to work off a way of making it so that um, there's a natural place for the neck, um, but yet um, it still comes over in the front and lays flat and all of that. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of um, math and designing as I go because I want it to fit my shape well. And I think I have some ideas how, how I can do that. A lot of um, sweater patterns, when you see them, they're based on folding two things flat and one side being the back and one side being the front. Well, most people aren't exactly flat like that. <laughs> 
and I'm definitely not. So you have to do a little bit of modification to have it come over the shoulder well, fit around your body well, um, and not look big and boxy. For example, I love the idea of those cocoon parties. Cannot wear them because they look like I'm literally wearing a blanket on me. By the time I get them the right shape, the way that they're designed to be made, um, the right, not the right shape, before, by the time I get them the right size, <laughs> based on the shape that they're designed to be, they just look way huge on me. So you just have to kind of like play with things and, and that's that's what I've enjoyed learning the most with all the different crochet projects is to be able to make things work um, so that I will get wear out of them. So I'll also pop up a picture of the cardigan I made for myself in Comfy Cotton Blend. Um, and my, my regular cardigans, I always just follow Krista from the Secret Yarnery's Tammy cardigan. That's where I got the bulk of my learning for most of the tops I make and cardigans I make. And then um, I apply some of that to the granny square pattern when I made the sweater for my friend last year. So anyway, any questions, let me know. Last month I was showing you another ripple blanket I was working on, a granny ripple blanket, because I knew I wasn't gonna get to finish those two until the end of the year. And I had a whole bunch of, I love this cotton, Hobby Lobby, I love this cotton from my friend Debbie. Um, she did a Christmas in July gift for me last year. And I couldn't decide what to do with it. I didn't want to just have keep wondering what to do with it. And so I decided to put it all into a blanket. And I wasn't sure if I needed to use it all. And in the end, I'm really happy I did because it made it a better size. So let me pop up a picture here of my husband holding it up for us so that we can see the whole thing. And here's the blanket. So these, I'm gonna say these are probably discontinued yarns because um, I think they came from the Hobby Lobby clearance in 2021. Although I saw Seta opening up some yarn not too long ago and she did have two of these yarns. But anyway, we have, uh, I think, Lime Ombre there. I can remember that one. And then we have like a, a babyish yarn. This one here is called Lime Dots. I know last time it was coming up very gray on the camera, but it's actually white with flecks of purple and, and um, green. And then we have this lovely one that has the lilac, purpley greens and beiges in it. And I, I had um, three skeins of this, this one here, which is like a very, it's called Antique Cream, I think. And so that is what I was using as my divider rows. And it turned out, these were all in sets of three, but it turned out this um, this more um, pastel -y one looking here, there was two of one color and one of the other, and the one of the other had a little bit more beige in it. So I opted to put that in the middle. So anyway, it's probably much easier for you to see the blanket on the picture that my husband helped me with. But I'm sitting on the couch, it goes all the way to the floor, and I could put it over my head if I wanted to. So it's perfect, and it's cotton, and it's soft, and I'm gonna have this forever. So thanks, Debbie. <laughs> and uh, I love a cotton blanket, as you guys know. And this will go in for the summer closet and keep it out for, I just like having weight. There's a, a nice weight to it on you, but you don't feel hot from it because it's made of cotton and it breathes. Anyway, that was fun and I got that finished in August. So I did say blankets, 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 right? Um, I have made a couple of Cake Pop Granny Square blankets using Bernat Pop, hence Cake Pop, uh, I called them. I pop up a couple of pictures here. Um, one I made it just coming out of the cake, the first one I made. I started in the center, pulled from the center, <laughs> and let the cake do what it did. So I did not do any color control. And I also was changing directions. I prefer to change directions on my granny squares because I like the texture it gives. Um, but what happens when you're using cake yarn for that is that whatever color you just finished with, you end up doubling back and it gives thicker sections and it doesn't carry the color all the way around, especially when you're making huge granny squares like that. So then I had a request for another one. And with that one, I did a lot more color control. So I'll pop up that picture now. And for that one, I stayed going in the same direction so that the color would spread around as much as possible. Um, I don't love the interruptions in colors that come from cakes when you use them organically. That's just my brain working over time because a lot of times I see other people's blankets and they look gorgeous. But for me personally, I end up choosing the color control. I wanted to do a similar thing using the Bernat cakes again, 
Um, I've gotten a bunch of them on clearance over the years. These have been in stash for a couple years, two to three years, I'd say. Uh, a collection of them. A bunch of them I got for my birthday two or three years ago. Um, and so I wanted to do the same thing. And basically, based on what I had in my stash, I decided to use anything that I had one or two of. And then uh, the, the real jumping off point was I only had one of these. And I think for the most part, these Bernat Pop Cakes, they continue to make them and they don't really take the colors away. Although when they go on clearance the way they did, you'd think they were disappearing. But this one, and I'm not gonna remember all of them. I have some of the yarn labels, so we'll see how it goes. But this one was called Blue Streak. So this is how it started. And so right from the beginning, I was gonna pretty much be cherry picking these, these out because I started. it started to bug me. Where is it? Right about here, you can see that the gray and the lilac are, are going together. Uh, I don't know if there's anywhere else where there's not a straight row across. There must be. But anyway, um, I decided at that point, I was just gonna cherry pick them all, so I got even rows. <laughs> but the point was, I wanted to have some of this on the other corner, so I do. Um, but I really like how it turned out. And again, you're not gonna be able to see it on here. And the majority of the reason why it turned out the way it did is because I, I did cherry pick the colors. Let me grab one of the cakes. This one is called Radical Botanical. And as it sits in the cake, I mean, it's it's interesting. It's a lot of different greens and, and, and all the different shades of green that are in here don't even like the camera doesn't do them justice. But how it ended up spreading out throughout the blanket and keep in mind, I did that with some other colors as well. It really, really worked. I don't know why, but it did. So I know I have one in here called Hot Chocolate, which I only had two of. And I have one in here called Purple Morning that I only used one of. So the pictures on the bed will be able to do much more justice than I can hold it up for you. But a lot of the cakes had gold in it and gold is not one of my colors, but it, it does something to blankets because I had another blanket that I made earlier in the year, I think with an Ogo that had gold in it that ended up looking awesome too. But anyway, this was fun. Mostly I have either three rows or two rows and in the very middle section where the stripes are getting the widest I have some single rows and yeah so corner to corner <laughs> uh, and this one's pretty big too let's see I put it down to the floor and it would definitely go over two people on the couch long ways over width ways it would probably go over three or four people on the couch but like it it's all the way onto the floor and it can way go up over my head so a nice size you saw it on the bed and I just did a very simple border on it where you go around and do your single crochet chain two. I tend to just do single crochet chain two over the blocks because I want it to pull it in. And then I just did some half doubles, so three half doubles. Again, because if you put double crochets back on after, it's gonna loosen it up more. So I put half doubles and I just keep a nice simple border on the corner to corner because I want all the um, colors to be the star of the show, not, not necessarily the border. And for this blanket, I used a seven millimeter hook. So that was a nice treat to be able to use a nice big hook with that Bernat Pop yarn. It's a very, that it works up like very dense acrylic and um, like thick acrylic. Uh, some acrylics are a lot thinner than others, right? And so that was fun. I'm glad I have it made. And this came on vacation with us when we were away earlier in August. So it was fun having all those colors to work with. It's very uplifting and motivating. I love color. <laughs> Any questions, let me know. Basic corner to corner stitch. I think I said that, but just in case. <laughs> As a result of all that cherry picking, I did end up with a bunch of scraps and I am slowly working my way through them, um, making granny squares. And this will just be what it is. This might not even be something this year, but I wanted to make sure that all the yarn got put into something rather than just put into the stash because they're pretty small balls. Um, I have, the rest of them you can see. Can you see without them dumping out? Yeah, you pretty much can tell. They're in there. I use 11 cakes for the blanket, but before starting to make the squares, I think I pretty much had one cake's worth left. And um, it feels light to me now, but um, anyway, around that, maybe a cake or less. Um, so just to give you an idea of the size of that blanket, you'd want to have 11 <laughs> Bernat Pop Cakes on hand to make that size blanket, but I, I had quite a bit left over and I also used one full skein of um, Craftsmart gray 
there's a lot of grays in, in the cakes as well, so I thought it would complement it nicely and that I would have enough left over to do the border, and I did, and it worked out. So whenever I needed a little extra gray, I was able to use that one. Okay, that's enough about the blanket. <laughs> One last whip I almost forgot about, but it has been uh, the start of the show here on the couch. It's on the couch like that because I can't really pick it up. It's still attached to yarn. So I got a little clip for you that I'll insert right here. Hey everyone. So here's just an update on the current uh, Afghan I'm using skinny cakes for. Here are the four skinny cakes. It is blowing out a little bit. Um, and these were all clearanced out. So I'm not so sure they're gonna have these colors anymore. But basically, I'm just kind of using the strategy to go through one color sequence and then um, snip and rejoin. So there are two attached right now. You can see those hanging off. And I'll put this back, but I'll show this in the video as well. But you can see she's coming along. So here's the blanket for now. Um, it's kind of attached to the yarn still, so that's why I thought I wouldn't try grabbing it too much during the video and I thought I'd make this little clip instead. Okay, so this is my latest uh, scrap gan, if you will. I don't wanna call them scrap gans when I'm making them on purpose, but I'll pop up the picture of the yarn here. So there's four cakes. As uh, so you just saw them on my cart, the camera was blowing them out a little bit on the cart. I think the picture's a little bit more, um, doing the colors a little bit more justice, but those were discontinued skinny cakes this year. And so I don't know if those colors are going to stay or not. So that one is turning out nicely. And I'm basically trying to go through an entire color cycle with two of them held together before I cut the yarn. But sometimes the color cycle is, is bringing back um, the color that's already been in there. It does it with the peach. So I want to spread that out a little bit more in the blanket. So basically I just go on my gut. And when I feel like it's enough, I can snip one yarn and bring back another one. Um, so this one won't be as colorful as the last one i'll um i'll put a picture at the end of the video of the one i just finished that was much more scrappy because i had a whole bunch of mandelas that went into it as well but uh when i liked how much it was working up i thought that the skinny cakes would be perfect for it so i'll be able to make these on and off whenever i feel like having a scrappy look that's an intentional make uh so i don't know should we call them stash gans instead of the scrap gans <laughs> Uh, and this one I use an eight millimeter hook and it's just alternating double, half double, double, half double. Just gives a little bit of texture um, and interest. Completely mindless project when you want color and um, something easy that you can just work on whenever. So that's gonna be on the hook. And yeah, that one I don't have any per particular rush to complete either. Um, so we'll see, cause now that September is here, <laughs> August I kind of just had a month of do what you want um, work on the things that you want and, and strategize by like when I had the opportunity to be making smaller things, I worked on granny squares. When I had the opportunity to do bigger things, I worked on blankets, but, um, September, I do have to do a little bit more planning. Uh, I have promised a birthday gift for the end of October. That's going to take quite a bit of work because it's a daisy, daisy granny square poncho. And I've made daisy squares before. I'll put a picture at the end of Jada's daisy squares that I made, whoosh, it's probably three or four years ago now. Uh, I made a wall hanging with them. And so it's gonna take me going back to relearn the daisies themselves. And then also figure out how to put them into a um, multiple square poncho. I'm not just doing that like two, uh, two or four square poncho thing. I'm gonna do, I think 16 squares. But they're not all going to have the daisies on them, but about eight of them will. So i got to strategically place them as well. And uh, black has been requested as one of the colors, so that's going to be a bit of a challenge. But I'm going to start making them and we'll see how it goes. And I'll definitely be able to show you those at the end of September. Um, and I kind of go from there. I would like to make my mom something for her birthday too. I just haven't quite decided what. I was trying to take this year off on crocheting for gifts so I did a bunch in the beginning of the year for February that was already sort of pre-planned and haven't really done much since so I don't mind it coming back in but I just kind of got to figure out in my own mind how to plan it out work's been crazy hectic and taking a lot of my time uh, it's been very stressful and for me stress flares my arthritis like crazy so I've been noticing a lot more pain than normal uh, in my joints even in my even in my hands and my hands usually aren't really as bad 
Um, it's kind of one of those things where it's always there, but it doesn't um, make me stop crocheting. Well, lately it's been making me stop crocheting a bit, so that's a bit disappointing. But what are you gonna do? I think everyone's really busy at work these days. <laughs> And I guess I can almost wrap up. I just will show you that there was a little bit of yarn for my birthday this month and uh, some great gifts too. You can see here I got a really cool piece of love and crochet notions pouch from my sister and a great um, wooden yarn bowl from my brother. So those are part of my lovely crochet things now that I have, which is awesome. And my mom was great too because she let me start shopping when the clearance started at Michael's. So I was able to get um, some shawl and a ball for like $3. I was able to get a bit of the impeccable when it was $2. Can you imagine? They put that yarn all the way up to $6.99 in Canada. And the, the, they were clearancing out specifically impe impeccable speckled stripes. So I got these in a few colors. I was I got two because I, I had a plan in mind. And this is sort of the last thing I can show you that I made with one of these. And this one was particularly interesting because it looked completely different depending on how it was uh, twisted up into the skein. Um, but I've made three granny squares. So I now know I can get three grannies out of one skein. And I was trying to do that thing where I doesn't, not to let it bug me where the granny square rows ended. <laughs> so I only did the three, the three squares before I uh, decide for sure if I'm gonna keep going with this. But initially my mind was, in my mind was I'd see how many grannies I could get out of um, one and then keep the other one for holding double in scrap projects because for two bucks you can't really leave it there right and and just because you get such a variety of color so those were a few of the things i got with the michael's clearance and some skinny cakes um did i find anything else the other thing i found at one of the michael's pretty early on in their clearance so my mom like let me start shopping for my birthday in june i think it was so she was very accommodating because i was only doing gift yarn this year and not doing any uh real yarn shopping uh, i found some crystal cakes for like three dollars so i have some crystal cakes set aside now to do like an entire project with them which may end up being a blanket so that was really good too, but all this is long gone. <laughs> so not to tempt you too much. I'll pop up a picture here of something I found while we were on vacation. Um, it was just interesting because it was at Dollarama and it was almost all name brand yarns and the majority of which we don't see very regularly anywhere in stores in Canada. Uh, I picked up only one of them, which is this premier um, everyday anti-pilling as well. So that's interesting because you can see the difference in the labels, right? So the one I'm using for my uh, sweater that came from Stash is Anti-Pilling Everyday Medley and it says exclusive on it. And this one just says Premier Everyday Anti-Pilling. And they're selling it for $4.25 at, at Dollarama in um, Canada, in Ontario, Canada, um, $4.25. And they only had two colors. And so I got a few of these so that, because um, I really like that those neutrals. And I, I will, like, I, I'm trying to be very specific about what I add to stash. And anti-pilling yarn is something that I'm interested in adding to stash because it's anti-pilling yarn. So uh, hopefully this will make a nice wearable of some kind at some point. Oh, I got a gift I got to show you. I almost forgot. My friend Debbie spoiled me again. And I had already put this away, so it was nice and safe because I'm looking forward to being able to use it probably next year for the spring. She sent me some ice yarn. And it's cotton. Debbie knows I have a love affair with cotton and we don't get we don't get access to very soft cottons here in Canada. And this is Mona Lisa. It is beautiful and it's soft and it does remind me very much of the Hobby Lobby. Um, so yeah, I've been able to try quite a few cottons now. So I have, I think, 800 grams of this. So eight balls. These are 100 gram balls. And these are beautiful pastels. Uh, where it's changing color, it kind of almost looks like there's purple, but it's primarily like um, yellow, pink, blue, and a little bit of white. So thanks, Debbie. And then the last thing I got, um, I had kind of been stocking homespun on Mary Maxim for a while because I already have some homespun and I'm interested in making a blanket, but I didn't have enough variety to come up with a nice colorful style blanket with it. And they were clearancing it out. Uh, it was the cake style, but these are still pretty much the same size as you would get them in the skein. So these are six ounces, 170 grams, 185 yards, 169 meters. And it says new look homespun and it's homespun stripes in this cake. 
case. And I think that the um, regular price was saying like $11.99. And that, that sounds right to me of what I would have seen this for at um, Michael's before, even maybe $9.99. But like yarn has been going up like crazy over the last two years, right? So um, anyway, these went down to $4. So I did pick up um, like in twos, a couple of, or three or four of the different colors they had. So I just grabbed a couple to show you. I plan to cherry pick this so that when I get to wanting this light blue, I'll have twice as much, for example. And then here's an another one I got, which is very just purples and aquas. Um, so yeah, so at some point I'm gonna pull out all of my homespun and make a blanket with it. I'm on a blanket kit, can you tell? And then the other thing I lucked into was um, I wasn't going to make this purchase unless I could get free shipping. So at one point they had the yarn on sale and then the very next sale they did, they put a thing on there of if you spent $60, you had free shipping. I'm like, great, but let's see what the prices of the yarn still are. And at that, at the point I had put the yarn in my cart, I think a lot of you know that I like the sparkle yarns, right? Well, the pound of sparkle was is normally on Mary Maxim in Canada $16.99 for this huge one, right? Uh, and I've bought it a couple of times now for around $12.50. But it went down when I went. So I put it in my cart because the homespun was such a good deal. I thought I'd get a couple of colors of this. And um, but when I went back there, when the um, free shipping went on, it had gone down to $8.74. So you get this huge pound of sparkle. And what I really like about these ones and it's probably funny because it doesn't pick up on the camera as well for that reason but the sparkle in this yarn is a similar color to a yarn so I, I appreciate a silver sparkle yarn even a gold sparkle yarn in for what it is to me that a lot of that's very holiday holiday or celebratory but I really appreciate a sparkle when it's the streamer is the same color as the yarn so that's why I picked it up I have a purple and the blue, and I already had teal and burgundy and stash from last year, so happy about that. The other thing I found at the same time, and the only reason I tried this is because of the price point, so let me see if I can find the receipt. So this one I was not intending to buy just regular acrylic, but I was intrigued by this when I first started seeing them have it, and it's just called Mary Maxim Pound of Fun, and I don't remember what they were charging for this, but let's just say they were charging like $12.99 for this, this was on sale for $5.94. So who's gonna turn up, turn down that much acrylic? And so this is a very charcoal black, but when I saw this on there, they called it black, but I could tell it was gonna be charcoal black. And this reminded me exactly of um, Bernat Cozy style, because I've had that in the past and it's identical. I have a tiny little bit of a scrap left and it's identical, nice and soft. So you guys can keep your eye out for when this, if they, they, I didn't see any more of this most recently when I was on there. So I don't know if they're gonna come and go with the uh, pound of fun, but I liked it, I liked it a lot. I was impressed with, with what it is for the price. <laughs> and that is the end of the birthday yarn shopping or birthday haul. Uh, and I appreciate all those people who enabled me to, to do it. Uh, it was fun and I'm ready to be back on hiatus and uh, don't plan on getting any more yarn for the rest of the year. Um, I really want to focus on my stash. There's, when I see my stash, I just see uh, possibilities. And so even though there's always new things coming out, I'm trying to be motivated by those possibilities. And also I'm trying to be more motivated by the fact that if it's on sale this year, there'll be a different sale next year that might be just as good. So that can be motivating as well. I didn't go to Spin Right. Spin Right sale looked fabulous. The pictures were awesome. I was so happy that they were able to do the tent again. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Spin Right Factory Outlet is in Listable, Ontario. I think there's one in North Carolina as well. But finally, after all of COVID, they were able to have their tent sale for August. And it looked like they had a lot of stuff there. So I hope everybody who went had a great time. I wasn't very successful trying to find any sort of haul pictures or anybody saying that they were there and what they picked up, but it looked awesome. So I'm really happy that they were able to do it. And I know it was probably a lot of work for them. It was for two weeks, so. Anyway, I'm still happy with the little haul I had. I don't want to keep you any longer, so thanks for spending this time with me in September. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to leave me a comment in the comment section of this video, and I will get back to you. Until then, I hope you guys are all doing well. Have a great day, and happy crochet! Bye! I always tell Debbie that when she says if she was organized, she'd be dangerous, that it makes me laugh so hard. 
and I love it. Well, it applies to all of us, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Definitely to me this month. So there's another thing I want to tell you about that I forgot, but it requires me to flip the camera around so you can see it better. And that is some of the crochet tools I use to help protect my hands. One sec. Okay, so I'm just in the process of editing my video and then I saw my hand, so that reminded me. Debbie's been telling me to talk about this for a while. Anyway, so these are the finger ones and this is the hand one. So these ones I just crochet and this one's already kind of gotten ratty so I've patched it up and stuff. But I just crochet a band to sit around my hand and you can see where the hook is pressed. Anyway, it's just like a little band out of cotton. This is some um, cotton, handicraft cotton stripey I had um, on hand and it's nice and soft and it just helps me with my hook so when i'm holding my hook i tend to for some reason push on that part of my hand and it gets sore after a while so um, i've been doing this for years and years where i just wear one of these on my hand i have several of them in my crochet bags and stuff so that um they're available to me and when i need them and it is better with the clovers but it still does bug me i guess it's just how i've always held the hook so anyway, I just make these little pads, if you will, uh, for my hand and I put them on and they protect me a little bit when I'm holding the different hooks. And for the other one, um, a while back when I was using Bernat Blanket Yarn, uh, this goes back to probably 2018, uh, I started to get a real burnt spot on my finger and um, it was obviously pulling too much. And once it started, it wouldn't go away. Um, I guess the cotton was almost making it happen and then uh, it was the blanket yarn that eventually made it happen. And these are like um, tubes you can get for different sports and they have a little bit of tension in them. I just recently got these off Amazon and um, they're great. Uh, the first ones I got were more for gaming, but I would have to cut off the tips. So then all they did was refray. These ones are already made with the holes and they're more for sports and stuff. Um, the first ones were more for, um, I guess, gaming, but both of them work and I don't have to constantly use tape on my finger and uh, yeah, because I always, always have to have my finger uh, covered because that's where I pull the yarn across my finger. Anyway, I'm not sure if those tips help, but if they do, great. Bye guys.